What's up everybody, Wes here with Tree City Trading. Welcome to our deep dive into the world of Bitcoin bitmaps. Before we really get into bitmaps, let's first understand the concepts of Bitcoin inscriptions and ordinals. Inscriptions, first proposed by Peter Todd in 2012, are a way to add data to a Bitcoin transaction that isn't necessary for the transaction, but can be used to add extra information. This extra information is added directly to the blockchain and can be anything from a simple message to complex data. And here's Peter Todd's Twitter, at Peter K. Todd. And I thought this was kind of interesting. Uh, this tweet's from the guy that proposed the inscriptions in 2012. 12. The freak out regarding ordinals is stupid. You've always been able to embed as much data as you can pay for in Bitcoin transactions. Taproot didn't change that. My publication from 2015 did pretty much exactly what ordinals are doing with SegWit. So that was kind of interesting. The guy that made the original proposals for Bitcoin inscriptions doesn't seem to be a big fan of ordinals because it's been around for so long. And on the other hand, we have Sergio, Sergio Lerner. He first proposed ordinals back in 2015 as a way to order or rank things. In the context of Bitcoin, it refers to the order in which the transactions are added to the blockchain. Each transaction has an ordinal number, which represents its place in the blockchain. So someone on Twitter asked Sergio what he thought of ordinals. Uh, Sergio's response, fun, but not world changing. It shows that devs love to build on Bitcoin. I would have preferred those inscriptions be done on RSK to keep the Bitcoin blockchain small. I'm working on RSKIP to add the RSK RSK bridge capability to transfer ordinals to be traded on RSK DEXs. So I thought that was kind of interesting. The guy that originally proposed the ordinals is still working to develop it. Uh, he's working on a DEX to trade ordinal seamlessly. So that's pretty nice. But all in all, inscriptions are a way to add data to a Bitcoin transaction, while ordinals refer to the order in which the transactions are added to the blockchain so you can refer to that data later. It's basically its place in line. So the inscription is the data and the ordinal is the order in the blockchain where that data is stored. So now that we have a very basic understanding of what inscriptions and ordinals are, let's talk about bitmaps. Bitmaps are a new type of ordinal inscription that combines the immutability of the Bitcoin blockchain with the idea of ownership and uniqueness. Bitmaps are created by inscribing block numbers onto the Satoshis themselves the smallest units of Bitcoin. This gives the inscriber a sense of ownership of that block on the Bitcoin blockchain. According to bitmap theory, the first person to inscribe 420.bitmap owns block number 420 on the Bitcoin blockchain. This allows us to think of the Bitcoin blockchain in new ways. Users are able to own certain blocks and the transactions within those blocks, which may add value to a certain metaverse. So how do we create bitmaps? You can use a wallet like unisat.io to inscribe and create your bitmaps. Unisat.io is an open source Chrome extension for Bitcoin ordinals and BRC20 tokens. It allows you to store and transfer your ordinal NFTs and see unconfirmed NFTs immediately while also inscribing on the fly without having to run a full Bitcoin node. However, it's important to note that anyone can inscribe anything, which can lead to duplication. To avoid this, users should use the Unisat search function to see if their bitmap already is taken. It's not recommended to inscribe if you're not the first one to do so. Only the first inscription of the bitmap will be the valid one. So what that means, if I search for this 420.bitmap, you can see that there's been over 30 pages of people inscribing 420.bitmap. However, only the first one that inscribed it will actually get the ownership of that bitmap. Whoever inscribed it first will be able to use it in any future utilities and also be able to trade or sell it on the marketplace. So with Unisat, it's kind of important to make sure that your bitmap exists. And to do that, I would click on the bitmap search. I would type in the bitmap that I'm looking to purchase. In this case, I'm using the example 574684.bitmap. Currently, this bitmap does not exist, so there are zero results when I search for it. That means it's an available bitmap. If I take it over to a tool like Bitfeed, I can see what's special about this block. Is this something that I wanna buy? I can see that it's a block from 2019, it has about 6,000 Bitcoins in it, has about 2,500 transactions, which are a lot. So that's quite a high transaction amount. Um, so let's go ahead and inscribe this one. So I always like to double and triple check. So let's go ahead and search one last time. We'll see, make sure this, this Bitcoin block is open. There are zero results. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to the Unisat inscribe tool. I'm gonna inscribe some text and I'm gonna do a single text inscription of this bitmap. I'm going to inscribe 574684.bitmap on a single Satoshi. I'll hit next. Confirm that it's correct. We made sure that that bitmap is available and hasn't been used yet. I'm gonna go ahead and bump up the gas to 18. 
And this is only going to cost me $1.52 to inscribe this bitmap. This bitmap may be worth nothing in the future. If builders don't come and build utility for this bitmaps, then I'm just kind of wasting my Satoshis. But I'm only wasting $1.50, and I think that's a safe enough risk, so I'm going to go ahead and inscribe this. So I set my fee, I confirmed I'm only paying 5,000 sats, so I'll go ahead and submit and pay my invoice. As you can see, this is only going to cost me a couple thousand sats. We'll go ahead and sign and send. The payment's been received and the inscription's now in queue. And perfect, now my order's in the mempool. So what I can do is I can click the view transaction link to take me to mempool.space and I can see when my transaction gets picked up. So here you can see the transaction's currently unconfirmed. That means I have not yet inscribed. Now if someone were to come along and pay more gas than I did and front run me, then that means they would get this inscription before I did. That's why I like to always pay a little more than the base transaction fee. Right now you can see most people are paying about 11 sats per VB. I bumped that up to 18 so I can jump to the front of the line and get confirmed quickly. What's also nice about Unisat is that you can see your unconfirmed transactions. So I can currently see that this bitmap that I just created the inscription for, 574684.bitmap is unconfirmed. It's still sitting in the mempool waiting for a Bitcoin miner to pick it up and inscribe the Satoshi on the blockchain. Okay, so after 31 minutes, my transaction was confirmed successfully. And here you can see on mempool.space, we have one transaction confirmation. So this means when I come over to unisat.io and search for my bitmap, I can now see that it exists and it's owned by my wallet address. That means the inscription was successful and now I own it. And then I can take my bitmap over to ordinalswallet.com and list my bitmap for sale in the marketplace. If someone likes this bitmap, if they like this number or the art attached to the block or inscriptions that are on the block, some type of data or code that's embedded in this block, they can actually purchase it because it has value to them. And just like that, I've inscribed a Bitcoin block, block number 574684, using the bitmap theory. So what about future use case? Bitmaps will have a wide range of potential use cases. They can be used for digital art, unique identifiers, or even as a new form of ownership in the digital world. A value proposition of bitmap lies in the uniqueness of the bitmap and the ability to inscribe information directly onto the blockchain. The bitmap theory suggests that bitmaps could play a significant role in the development of some sort of metaverse on Bitcoin. And I've even seen some media outlets talking about this, like a Decrypt and Yahoo Finance. They're highlighting the potential of bitmaps in the evolving digital landscape. Many are considering this a new land plot in this Bitcoin metaverse. So this has turned into a big land grab of everyone getting all the valuable bitmaps or at least what they consider valuable. And so that kind of leads me to the next section of the video. What makes bitmaps unique and valuable? It really depends on how you look at it. And this is how I've been thinking that bitmaps could be more valuable in the future. The first is a historical context. For example, one of the interesting utilities is called Messages from the Mines, which actually reads the inscriptions on certain blocks. And I consider these messages to be almost time capsules into the past, which is why I'm looking for certain blocks that have special messages inscribed. And here's a couple that I found that are really interesting. Obviously, the most interesting and probably the most valuable block is block zero. This block was mined in early 2009 by Satoshi. Satoshi famously inscribed a message that said, The Times, January 3rd, 2009, Chancellor on the brink of the second bailout for the banks. This message was left by Satoshi Nakamoto in the Genesis block, embedded in a script in the input of the very first Bitcoin transaction. It's both a nod to the limitation of the fiat currency and the financial crisis at the time, as well as a demonstration of the undocumented use of a Coinbase message. The message contents are taken from the headline of the January 3rd, 2009 British newspaper. This suggests that Satoshi Nakamoto may have lived in the United Kingdom. So being able to own this bitmap... He says that you own block zero on this blockchain in this future metaverse. So I think this is kind of a cool historical artifact. And let's look at some other historical artifacts that I found personally. So I thought this one was really cool. This is actually block number 385198. I found it on the messages from the mines. Now this block is from November 25th, 2015. At the time of that block, the price of Bitcoin was $350. On this transaction, there is a message hidden that says, I predict $10,000 Bitcoin by 2020. And what's really interesting is that in early 2020, that was the exact price of Bitcoin. So in 2015, someone inscribed that they predict $10,000 Bitcoin by 2020. And sure enough, in 2018, Bitcoin had the 
twenty thousand dollar blow off top, went all the way back to the low three thousand dollars, and then in early twenty twenty, Bitcoin was in fact ten thousand dollars. So I thought that was kind of a cool prediction that we're seeing into the future of Bitcoin. I thought that may have been a valuable bitmap, so I snatched up bitmap. 385198. I used the Unisat wallet to inscribe that. And that's kind of a cool historical artifact that I now own using this bitmap theory. And then here's another interesting one that I found. This is actually block 417567 from June 2016. Now, if you remember on June 17th, 2016, the Ethereum DAO was subjected to an attack exploiting a combination of vulnerabilities, including a specific call that resulted in the transaction of 3.6 million Ethereum. That's around a third of all the Ether that have been committed to the DAO. And at the time, that transaction stole about $50 million of Ethereum in one of the most infamous attacks on blockchain in history. This attack, of course, led to the Ethereum fork, which gave birth to Ethereum Classic and Ethereum as we know it today. And what's interesting is a couple days after the hack, someone inscribed that Ethereum will collapse in the next weeks and the SEC will investigate them. This message was inscribed in this transaction a few days after the DAO hack. And sure enough, about a year later, the SEC issued an investigative report concluding that the DAO tokens were securities and they were investigating the DAO and the Ethereum Foundation. So again, I thought this was a cool artifact inside of one of these inscriptions in a bitmap. So I claim this block number that has this transaction in it. And I truly believe that if the bitmap theory is successful, these type of artifacts may have value in the future. It's kind of interesting that these people had the foresight to see what would happen and inscribe it on a Satoshi even years before what they were talking about played out. And another way to think about these bitmaps are the types of transactions or different data within the actual blocks. For example, this block 215694 was inscribed in January 2013 and has exactly 420 transactions. Now there there are only so many blocks that have 420 transactions, so anyone that owns this block could be considered having access to a secret 420 club. Or for instance, with block 136700, this one has 69 transactions and is also another infamous crypto number. And then if we come back to the top, we have block 539577, which only has three transactions, but it kind of looks cool. It has one really big transaction and two small ones, kind of looks like a sideways emoji or some type of piece of art. And then I also have this sub 100,000 block, block 93779, which has these similar size transactions. And I believe this type of block is actually called a Mondrian, where the blocks are nice, nicely formed in kind of an artistic manner. And then another interesting type of block are these blocks called Potoshi blocks, which are blocks that are known to be mined by Satoshi himself. This block, 1501, if I plug this into the Satoshi block tool, it actually shows as being a single transaction that was mined by Satoshi in January 2009. And being a block that was originally mined by Satoshi, I think that could add value to the bitmap if the bitmap theory is successful in the future. And then another type of inscription for messages on the block are code inscriptions. People are actually inscribing code, such as this block that I gathered from 328166. This block was mined in 2014 and someone inscribed the code for an HTML Pong game that's actually playable. And here if I move my camera, this is what the actual Pong game looked like. You have one paddle that you control and you move the paddles up and down to hit the ball back and forth. Very simple game, but I find it intriguing that this message was inscribed on the blockchain and I think it could have some value in the future being that there's this rare code that was inscribed on this block from 2014 with an actual working game. It's kind of cheesy. It's kind of meme-ish, but I think that's pretty cool. It's a cool artifact that I wanted to own. So I inscribed bitmap 328166. And then another type of bitmap that may be valuable is the actual artistic features of the bitmap. There's certain bitmaps that are known as punks, which are typically low transactions that are actually shaped like certain figures, like a crypto punk or some other NFT. For example, here in the middle, you can see my recursive punk 3197. And then on the left, you have block 200545, which kind of looks similar to the recursive punk. So I would consider this block a punk because it looks like a crypto punk. So I went ahead and grabbed 200545.bitmap. And this is just another way to possibly view your bitmaps as having value. Does it look cool? Does it have some type of artistic feature? It does it look like a crypto punk or some other NFT that that people may desire and want to purchase from you in the future. So really quick, I'm just going to give you a couple tools that I've been using to find some rare and special bitmaps. 
the first being the messages from the mines that we just covered. But this utility actually allows you to view transactions with messages in them, and it gives you a description of what that message is. For example, here's the message from 2011. This is the second ever Coinbase message left two and a half years after the first. It appears to be a signature from the Elegus mining pool. This message has appeared in over a thousand blocks since. So it's basically just a certain miner that's signing blocks with these transactions. And you can actually filter by different codes. So if I wanted to see things like ASCII art or code snippets or insults or proposals and obituaries, people have inscribed all types of information on the blockchain. And I think it's really cool to be able to go back and look at it. And to me, these messages are a form of digital graffiti. It's a unique cultural artifacts forever embedded in the blockchain. Another cool tool are the marketplaces. For example, Magic Eden. Here you can see the range of bitmaps available for purchase, and it's a place for you to come and trade and purchase new bitmaps. Here you can see so far there's been over half a Bitcoin in volume with a floor of 40489. This is continuing to grow and is picking up full steam. Let's take a look at the activity and see if there's any big, big purchases out there. So there is some volume and there is some traction happening here, which is very cool. Another interesting site are the Pitoshi block site. These Satoshi blocks are blocks that are believed to be mined by Satoshi. And you can actually come here, pop in the block number to the search here. So I'll pop in mine 1501. And I can zoom in here and see that bitmap 1501 that I won from 8-bit in the Twitter space is actually a block that was mined by Satoshi. So it's known as a Pitoshi block. And I think that's going to make it a little extra valuable in the future. I think that's really cool. It looks like Satoshi stopped mining around the 50,000 block mark. So if you have a sub 50,000 Bitcoin block, you may be a lucky owner of a Satoshi Satoshi block. And then finally, another really cool tool is the bitfeed.live. This is kind of a visualization of the blocks and it kind of gives you an idea of what the block could look like. If the blocks are gonna be some kind of NFT or something interesting, you can come here and actually see a visualization of the block. For example, if I look at the block 420069, you can see all the transactions in that block and there's a couple different ways to view it on the website with this view i'm viewing it by value but if i click on the gear and switch it to v bytes i can actually view the block in relation to the size of the data within the block and it kind of gives it a different visualization you can also color the block by age or the fee rate which it kind of adds a cool different color aspect to the block. And this is where things start to get really interesting because there's certain blocks that are, are one block, two blocks, three blocks. There's some that have uh, that, that are considered Mondrians, which are nice, even blocks. If we take a look at block 200,000, it kind of has a different look. Every block is unique, has their own kind of interesting look here. It's kind of a different way to visualize the Bitcoin blocks and the bitmaps tied to those blocks. So in conclusion, bitmaps represent a fascinating intersection of technology, art, and finance. They offer a new way to interact with the Bitcoin blockchain, opening up a world of possibilities for digital ownership and creativity. Whether you're a Bitcoin enthusiast, a digital artist, or just someone curious about the future of the digital world, bitmaps are a concept worth exploring. And as always, if you found this video informative, please like, subscribe, and share, listen to our channel, Tree City Trading for more content like this. If you have any questions or thoughts about bitmaps, please leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, Tree City Trading's out.